Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Attract and Stand Out podcast. I am your host, Darlene Holly, and I am so excited for today's interview. I have with me Purvi Shah. Thank you so much for joining me. She is a personal brand strategist and, and this all-around amazing human being. I had the opportunity to chat with her about a month ago and just love the work that she's doing. And I wanted to bring her on the show today to talk a lot about personal branding, which many of you in my audience know I love personal branding, sharing our story and really identifying who we are as individuals. We want to put that out into the market space. We want people to, to know who we are, but we want to make sure we're the leader of that. We're not letting other people assume who we are. So Pervy, welcome to the show. I'm excited to chat with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me here today. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here today. Awesome. Well, let's let's take, take us back a little bit, Pervy. Tell us a little bit about how you came into the world of personal branding and doing the work that you do today? Sure. So actually, my story is like going really back. My mother was a beautician. So I grew up with this, you know, everything beauty and fashion, you know. And um, what really touched me is that when my mother was uh, doing all these beauty treatments and when her clients walked out of the salon, the confidence and the joy, you know, they got was I think it was priceless mm -hmm. because you know beauty is inside out it's not just about how you show up like how you dress up and everything yes it's a very important part but how you feel inside mm -hmm. and when you take care of your inside you take care of yourself it's also self-love and self-care you know so that was a very very touchy part for me and I really enjoyed seeing all those transformations and that um inspired me to go into the beauty industry. So I went to uh, the beauty school back home in India. And when I came here, I went, I went to the beauty school here as well. So I can say I have been doing this beauty treatments and fashion and beauty all my life. And then I also dived into the personal branding because I have a story that, you know, who I am. When I came here, I started working at a makeup store and people were, I'm not white and blonde, I'm brown and black hair, so I'm different, but, you know, I was perceived different. I was, uh, people just judged me because how I looked, mm -hmm. you know, so I have a very strong, uh, you know, story to say that I was judged just because of how I looked, and I wanted to fit in the other, like, about being a white, you know, I mean, around with the white and blonde girls, you know, working at the makeup store. And I did try to fit in and I didn't feel right. I put the bl blonde highlights in my hair, you know, just to look like that. Mm -hmm. And it didn't look good on me. <laughs> of course, it didn't look so good on me. And then I changed and I realized that, hey, that's not me. I have to show up authentically who I am. And this, and then I just focused on my own superpowers and what I can, what I have to offer. So that means I was showing up authentically and that turned the table around and I became a top seller in that store within just one month. Wow. That's, yeah, that, that's where I really realized that, you know, your authenticity is something that attracts people more than anything else. And people wow. like you, people will trust you, just be you. Yeah. And I think that's such an important, I, th I feel like all of us at some point learn that lesson the mm -hmm. hard way. Like I, I remember yeah. even at, like when I think back to high school, I remember trying so hard to fit in. I wanted to, you know, be like everybody else, wear the same types of clothes, do this, my same hairstyles and my makeup and all those different things, exactly like everybody else was doing. And then mm -hmm. when I started my business, I was, I noticed I was learning that same behavior that I did in high school. I was trying to be like everybody else. I was watching how other business coaches were showing up, what they were wearing, how I was, you know, wearing business suits and briefcases. And I thought I had to be this certain way. And then mm -hmm. it took me probably, I, I'm a slow learner sometimes. I think it took me like two years and I had this aha moment in my business where I was like, stop trying to be like everybody else, Darlene. Like you are unique. You have your own special gifts, your own special talents, and things that set you apart. And it was then when I started showing up as myself and dressing more, felt more comfortable to me and, you know, having conversations around things that were important to me and my values and my belief systems, that's mm -hmm. when people really started to take notice of me. And it's like, I stopped blending in because when we're trying to be like everybody else, we're really blending in. 
were like vanilla ice cream, right? Instead, I'm like, I want to be mocha almond fudge. I want to be something, you know, different and really stand out. And so I love that that was part of your journey. And I, you know, it's funny because so many people go through that piece. What do you, I'm curious, like now that you've learned that and I'm, and as a personal brand strategist, like how do you help your clients identify pretty quickly that they don't want to blend in and be like everybody else? Like we use those unique pieces of ourselves to stand out. Sure. So I tell my clients, the first thing I tell my clients is that why blend in when you are born to stand out? You know, we all have unique gifts and you want to find out. Uh, I have a, like a questionnaire, you know, I give them a questionnaire and say that, what are your superpowers? Let's focus on it, you know, versus doing people who are, you know, doing what other people are doing. Of course, it is important, you know, marketing and, you know, showing up in a certain way. All those pieces are important, but you want to know what your superpower is. Like for me, for an example, I came from the uh, serving, you know, I serve people. So my strength is listener. I'm a good listener and servitude. Those two are my superpowers. And I focus more on that versus we doing this marketing on that marketing or, you know, and that will show up, you know, what your superpower is. People will make notice of it. Yeah. Absolutely. So if you focus on that, people will make notice of it. And the best marketing or is the word of mouth when you, you know, some of your happy clients send you more happy clients. And it just keeps on, you know, it's a ripple effect. It just keeps on rolling. And you don't have to sell too hard. <laughs> you know, just have fun doing what you do and what you're comfortable with. You know, that's what the personal branding is. Do what you're comfortable with. And of course, you have to, you know, really excel at what you do. But you don't really have to copycat other people that, oh, I have to fit in. No, you don't have to fit in. You are unique the way you are. And that's where you start your journey. That's where I, my clients, I sit down with my clients and we figure out what your superpower is. And then there are strategies to monetize it, you know, to show up on the social media. And specifically in this world of AI, you know, the, everybody comes up with something, you know, but nobody can, cop AI cannot copy get you, your individuality, your creativity, your authenticity. So I feel, I personally believe that personal branding is needed out more than ever in the history of a mankind because of AI. Yeah. Right now is the time you must dive in or you will blend in. Well, yeah, there's so many AI yeah. tools that can create content for you. And if each of us are sitting at home going into whatever, you know, I whether it's chat GPT or the thousands of other AI platforms that are starting to pop up on the market space, like if I'm doing a search on something and I just take that copy right from AI and use it on my website, use it on social media, and then you're at home doing the exact same thing, we're going to look and sound a lot alike, even if we have a lot of differences, but it's not going to look like it on the outside because of how we're marketing and how we're doing those pieces. One of the things that I talk a lot with my clients about is part of your personal brand is your story, your origin story, how you came to do the work that you do, sharing like the personal pieces of our lives, you know, whether it was while you were walking your dog last week or taking your kid to soccer, like bring those pieces into your world because people are going to relate to you. And there's a stat that says that people are 22 times more likely to pay attention and listen to you and remember you if you share a bit of your life and your story with them, because that's where we connect at. How do you, what, what, what's your thought process when it comes to storytelling with building your personal brand? Oh my God. That's, that is the door opener. Number one thing, your story, your why, why are you doing this? Or what, what is your passion? Why are you pursuing this? You know, your why is extremely important. And I would say that is the first thing, because when people hear my story, people relate, people relate to stories, mm -hmm. you know, it's not that, oh, uh, of course, and people have different, different uh, uh, expertise. And there are many people who may be doing the same thing as I do, or you do, right? But your story is something that's what connects the, you know, the people that attracts people like people, people feel, oh, I can relate to this, you know, and your journeys, you know, that inspires people. So your story is very, very important. And the first piece 
of doing why. And there is a statistic that, you know, the founders of the big companies, you know, who have personal branding in a sense that they are the face of their brand, 82% people are more likely to buy from you if you are the face of your brand. And that comes from your story, your why. Like I, I told you, like I wanted to blend it and I was putting blonde highlights in my black hair, which did not suit me, but I was so desperate. I wanted to fit in. Yeah. You know, so that's what I was doing. And I stopped it and I show, started showing up authentically and people started to notice me and I became the top seller and that store within one month of time. So that's why, you know, I think your story is number one thing. Just, you know, even if you think that, oh my, I don't have a great story. No, you do. People always want to listen to you and people do relate. You know, I always felt like, oh no, I don't think so. There are so many people, uh, they may have gone through the same thing, but no, we all are unique and we our journeys are unique in how we are sharing it, you know? And yeah. that relates to the people and attracts people towards you and what yeah. you do. And that also gives you a purpose. You know, your why gives you purpose to move forward in your business or whatever the work you are doing. Yeah, I completely agree. Like that, the, taking it back to your why, what's your passion, what's your heart, playing to your strengths, your superpowers, as you called it. Like that's mm -hmm. such an important piece. And so often we forget that we have these superpowers and these strengths because we're so naturally gifted with them. We just assume everybody else is going to be naturally gifted and graded as well. And then when you start having conversations, you're like, wait, like this is something I'm gifted with this. Most people aren't as good at this skill or whatever it is that, you know, that they're teaching or talking about. And I, I notice that with my clients, like what they think is something that's super average about them is actually something that they're gifted with. And it's something that, you know, people will pay them to work with them and get support and get encouragement and whatever it is that they need from them in that moment. When you think about your leadership style and as you show up, you know, as an entrepreneur and just a leader in your community, what do you think is one of your biggest leadership skills that gravitates people towards you? As I said, going back to my superpower, I'm a good listener. Yeah. So when you listen, I am able to create a community. I make feel people, it's just, you know, natural to me that I'm able to uh, facilitate or, you know, listen to people and build a community. So people, you know, I'm also known as a community builder and people feel welcome. People feel, you know, um, happy and comfortable to share their journeys with me or, you know, whatever you may have it, no stupid, nothing is, no stupid is, question is stupid. You know, I always say that you can share whatever you want to share with me or ask me whatever you want to ask me. And I think that makes people very comfortable with me. You know, being a leader for me is a being a good listener and a connector. Yeah. So important, like that, that listening piece. I, every time people talk about listening, I always remember my mom saying, Darlene, you have two ears and one mouth. <laughs> and I'm, I'm a very curious person as you know, my community knows I, I talk, I call it curious. I ask lots of questions because part of my superpower is, you know, being a coach, I'm, I'm great at hearing what somebody's sharing and really helping them find the nuggets based off of what they shared to uncover, you know, their next, their next level self of who they are. And so I always, I always giggle when I hear that, like the two ears, one mouth, I'm like, listen more, speak a little bit less. And sometimes like when you, when you sit back and listen, like you can find so many nuggets of what people are missing in that day to day, as I can imagine uh, when you're working with your clients, like you're picking up those little golden gems that they're mm -hmm. dropping for you. Yes, absolutely. And when you're listening, you're also learning, mm -hmm. you know, like for an example, I've been a hair and makeup artist for like maybe 25, 30 more than years. And recently I also won a very prestigious awards and trophies. But whenever I go to a makeup counter or something and somebody wants to, you know, do a makeup on me, I willingly let them do it. You know, even though I may be knowing a lot more than them, I'm more senior to them, but I let them do it. And I learned something from them, believe it or not. Yeah. Because everybody has a different angle yeah. to do their craft. And since I'm open to learning and listening, I do get something out of it. 
versus thinking that, oh no, I am senior to you. I know more than you. Yeah. So when you're listening, you know, you are also learning something new all the time. That means you're open to, you know, learning. Yeah, absolutely. When you think about the clients that you support and supporting them with like the strategy behind their personal brand, can you share maybe like a couple of tips if a client was, whether they're a leader inside of a C-suite exec, like they're a C-suite executive or if they're an entrepreneur, like how would you guide somebody who might be struggling to really allow their self to stand out and identify what the unique pieces of themselves are so they can start to build that personal brand? Um, I will start with saying that we all are brands. We may not know it. You know, even a stay-at-home mom is a brand, but we just don't realize it. Because the, the branding is, personal branding is what people think about you and what they project about you. Uh, meaning that when you're not in the room, people ha we have a reputation. We ha already have a reputation and we may not be aware of it. So when I uh, help my clients, what I do, say for an example, somebody is a leader and they want to, they are a manager and if they want to step into uh, leadership roles, you know, if they want to be a director or CEO of the company, I help them find out their superpower and their story, their communication style, their wardrobe and hair and makeup, everything is a piece of puzzle. And of course, if somebody is an entrepreneur and they want to be shown, for an example, somebody is an entrepreneur, uh, a coach, what should be their strategy for social media? or the LinkedIn profiles, the messaging. The messaging is story and the messaging. The two extremely important parts. First is your story that connects the, you with your ideal clients, your story and your messaging. Who do you serve? You know, that is very important. And when you are, your messaging is about, you know, if people just want to know what is there for them, how can you make that transformation and take them to the next level. So those are the two very, very important pieces. One is the story, which connects to you to your ideal clients and your messaging. So these two things, I start working with them and then we elaborate from there. Yeah, you're, you're, you're speaking to my heart. Definitely the same type of conversations I'm having with my clients, like that, the message and how you're communicating and what you're saying is so powerful. Like people are going to pay attention to what you're saying, but there's that fine line of how do we communicate clearly and succinctly and really grab attention versus mm -hmm. what I like to lovingly call like verbally vomiting <laughs> all over somebody where they feel like that was a lot. And I have no idea what you just said, but I'm going to go over here and like talk to somebody else or find the bathroom because they're trying to escape like what you just shared because it was so much in such a short time frame that they don't really understand or grasp what you're saying. And so how do we find our message and really communicate it clearly and be succinct and right. show right. who and like showcase who we are in those in that short time frame that we have with people? Yeah. So yeah, one of the um thing that I teach in messaging is like you so for an example, you for if you are at a networking event, uh you have 30 seconds to introduce yourself. So how can you First piece is how can you grab the attention? Number one. Number two, who do you serve and what transformation you can make within 30 seconds or 60 seconds? Yeah. So you have to really communicate and take your message very, very clear so that people can understand and connect with you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you only have you know, two seconds to grab their attention. So what you say and how you open that introduction can be so powerful. It's going to be whether I'm listening to what you're saying and I'm like, oh, I want to go over there and, you know, talk to Pervy because of what she just said, like that was amazing. Or people are also in that same moment thinking about what they're going to say when it's their turn to stand up, that they're not actually listening. So if you don't grab their attention, like they hear you, but they don't actually hear what you said and they don't know why they want to, you know, continue the conversation. I think that's an important part Right. That, that we miss, especially when we're networking. <laughs> like, right, right. Quick yeah. Because you don't have a lot of time. 
<laughs> right, absolutely. So one of the ways I teach is like, always start with a whiplash, you know, in the middle of the, your story. You know, you start your sentence with the middle of the story. Like I would say, if I'm at the, um, if I have to introduce myself and if I want to start a story in the middle, like a whiplash, I would say, my daughter looked at me in shock and said, you mom, what did you do to your hair? So now I'm like, oh my God, what did you do to your hair? You know, I grab the attention, I pull the attention right away. And then I start telling my story versus saying that, hey, I'm Kudu I'm an award-winning makeup artist. And this, you know, the people are, may or may not, you know, get your attention. But when you start in the middle of the story with a whiplash, like, oh my God, what happened here? Yeah. So you pull the attention. Yep. You're, you're hooking them. <laughs> Hook, lying and sinker. You're like, wait, what did you, what did you do to your hair? <laughs> because we all have some hair stories. Oh, for sure. Most days. <laughs> okay, <yeah. laughs> well, if we could solve that problem. <laughs> Well, Kirby, this has been so fun getting a chance to talk to that. Before we dive into rapid fire questions, which is where we're headed next, um, is there any last things you want the audience um, and the listeners to know about their personal brand? Like any last little golden nuggets you'd like to drop for them? Yes. I would say personal branding, as we talked, personal branding is more than ever important in a mankind, the history of a mankind because of AI. And the second thing I would say that brand yourself before people brand you. Yeah. It's extremely important, extremely important for entrepreneur or a business owner or coaches, consultants, or even somebody in a leadership. Extremely important that you brand yourself before people brand you. And we only have like less than three seconds before you open your mouth, somebody has judged you. People have judged about your expertise, what you can do for them, and your uh, worthiness, everything, before we open your mouth. So you really have to show a professional looking, you know, your outer appearance does matter. Even though you have a great story, great messaging, you know, but people do judge you on your appearance. So it's one other piece of puzzle. So everything needs to be aligned. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. So we're going to dive into like some get to know pervy information here. If I could buy you a ticket to anywhere in the world right now today, where would you go to and why? <laughs> hmm, tough question, because there's not one person in one place I want to be. Yeah, because I want to do all the things, but if you could just do one. <laughs> well, I would probably go to Switzerland because that's very close to my heart one place uh, and um, explore the nature because I like to be grounded. I like to talk. I mean, I, I like to walk in the mountains. So, and I feel very grounded when I'm surrounded by the nature, natural beauty. And I think I love Switzerland for its natural beauty, the mountains and, you know, the forest and everything. Yeah, that sounds beautiful. I have not been to Switzerland. I will have to add it to my bucket list. <laughs> When you are having a rough day, maybe life is overwhelming, you're noticing you're starting to get a little bit stressed out, what are some self-care things that you like to do for yourself to really help you um, reconnect with yourself? Sure. So the first thing I do is close your close my eyes and then take three very, very deep breaths and exhale with mouth open. That means let it just think that all the stress is going out of my body and, uh, you know, try to look for, it is what it is. First, you accept the situation. It is what it is. And try to look for the solution versus panicking. And as I said, my deep breathing, three deep breaths helps me ground it back and, you know, keep my sanity, honestly. I love that. Yeah. Bre breath work is something that over, yes. I would say the past four to five years, I really started to embrace and when, whether it's using it as a transition from one coaching call to working with another client, or sometimes it's leaving my office and going back into my home life, going, picking up kids. Like how, if I just take some time just to breathe and like 
it, it, re, it recalibrates me in a whole new way. And then I feel like I'm ready for that next adventure. Right. Yeah. I love that. So I'm curious when you think about the legacy and the impact you want to make in the world, like what are some specific things that really pop out for you? Like, what do you want to be known for? Well, I want to be known for the person who inspires to be authentically you. You don't have to copy get anyone. And I want people to know that you are unique in your own self and believe in yourself. And people are going to like you just the way you are. A lot of time I have struggled that nobody is going to like my content or nobody's going to like what I do, but that's all in your head. You know, so show up authentically who you are and people will accept you and you'll be surprised. Like my story, I am I am actually amazed at my own story because you know, when I stopped looking like other people or trying to do what other people are doing, I stood out. Don't blend in. I would say, don't blend in. You are going to stand out. And you can do it without, you know, going through so many things. Just be authentically you. Yeah. And I, I think I, we need to be reminded that every day that you are enough and you're just doing fine being authentically you. Yes. Yeah. So we're, we, we are each all so worthy. Yeah. And I think that we, we need that reminder, unfortunately, every day. I need that too. Yeah. A lot of the work that I do with leaders inside of organization is about the inner critic and whether it's imposter syndrome, how we're talking to ourselves, what we say to ourselves when we're looking at ourselves in the mirror. Who am I to do this thing? Am I worthy enough? Am I good enough? Like that's something that I know for myself. I, I'm constantly working on my inner critic and I see it show up with colleagues and with clients. And it, it's never, it's not one of those like one and done type of activities where we like read a self-help book and all of a sudden we're like, oh, I, I'm so confident now. Like It's something that we're working on and we're fine tuning and we're tweaking and as we grow and as we develop and as we put ourselves out there in bigger and bolder ways, like it's, I notice that little gremlin starts to show back up and we have to, you know, retrain it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And my last question for you, Pervy, before we wrap up is what is one of your top values? One of my top values is integrity, I would say, in a sense that, you know, if I'm not happy, because I come from the servitude industry, remember, I like to serve people. So I have to make sure that my clients are happy, of course, that's my number one priority. But at the same time, I am also happy with the work that I did, and I have given my 100%. Yeah. And if I'm don't feel that, oh, I gave my 100%. <laughs> that person is not walking out of my door. I make sure that we both are happy. Yeah. And I give in my best or, you know, I strive to give more than my 100% to my clients. Awesome. Thank you so much, Pervy, for being on the show and just sharing your heart and your message with us today. I know people are going to want to connect with you. Where is the best place for them to find you? Uh, they can find me on Facebook and LinkedIn. And my website is onpointimageconsulting.com. So they can also connect me through the website. Awesome. And I know you have a free gift for everybody. Can you share a little bit about what that free gift is? Sure. So it is about uh, how to become a sales magnet. So there is a, like a framework about what you can do as of today. Just start. It's like your beginning journey and finding your superpower and what makes you unique, you know, it just gives you a little thought process of personal branding. That's the first step to define who you are and who you are authentically and finding your superpower that goes you know, hand in hand. Yeah. And I know you, you were mentioning earlier too, that you have a new program that's coming out. Can you tell our listeners what they might expect when they start finding out more about you and what, how you work with your clients? Sure. So I came up with the, uh, the, my newest adventure is going to be a program. It's a six weeks program and it's called how to stand out at a networking event. And uh, a lot of time we go to, you know, we all 
in the business or in a leadership, we all network and we go to the networking events. But how many times we really connect with people? You know, so it again goes back to the very out, you know, however you look, what colors you should wear, what should be your hair, makeup, you know, uh, people even uh, talk about the messaging, you know, how you're introducing yourself, your communication style, your follow up style. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what business you are in, or even if you're a leader, but it all, you know, puts together how you can stand out and you be memorable. Mm. how you can be memorable so the person on the other side wants to connect with you and they have a clarity about what you do you can collaborate be clients anything anything but it's very clear and you are memorable so that's what this program is about how you can stand out sounds wonderful I know it's definitely needed I do a lot of networking out there <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always surprised how many people need extra love and support when it comes to networking and really finding how to like grab it, get people to gravitate towards them versus them having to feel like they have to constantly go up and, you know, get 30 business cards at an event. We just need a couple people that we make a great connection with, whether they're prospects, you know, potential clients, or if they're strategic alliance partners, I think that'll be a huge resource. So thank you for sharing about your new program um, and coming on the show. Um, if this is your first time listening to the Attract and Stand Out podcast, I invite you to subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to and leave a review. Every time somebody leaves a review, it actually invites more people into the podcast and gives us an opportunity to spread these amazing conversations that we're having each and every day. And if you decide to leave a review, send me a message over on LinkedIn or on Instagram with a screenshot of your review, and I will buy you your next coffee or chai, which is my favorite. Um, I would so appreciate it. It always helps get more people involved. And that's a wrap for another episode of the Attract and Stand Out podcast. Um, as always, I believe in you. You're allowed to stand out. You're allowed to shine. You're allowed to be you. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.